Long time no see guys, everybody hello, so today, Wild Hearts in review. I assume that most game mechanics are hard to copyright, uh, what would the world have been like if Nintendo had the trademark jumping on enemies heads? Or if Namco got paid every time a character ate in games thanks to the Pac-Man apology appetite? Namco's loading screen games were actually pretended, you can find them in the Rise Racer and the stop everyone else from doing it for a couple of decades. On the strength of the Wild Hearts, Capcom might be wisely a trademark some of Monster Hunter mechanics because Online of Force may have just written them in own game. That might be hyperbolic, it's almost certainly inflammatory, but the Wild Hearts isn't the fresh feeling hunting game we had in a while. So that's simply because it doesn't have 20 years of legacy features for include starting afresh with the basic core of Capcom as team series and then riffing off in a variety of the new ways, it's not quite as comprehensive as Monster Hunter World or instantly dynamic as Monster Hunter Rise. But Wild Hearts is the best hunting game we've ever had with a Capcom logo on the loading screen. The major addiction to the formula is the Kakaguri. Organic mechanical devices that fuse with a hunter and allow them to conquer, come to capture and construct out of thin air. They come in many forms and utilize celestial thread and the only limitation is how many and what can build in the battle being how much thread you can carry at once. This means you need to plan and utilize them at just right at the moment and while the things start out simple get increasingly more complicated. You're being with a crate, it's a wooden box, and you can stuck a bunch of them on the top of each of other and then jump off them. This is a good climbing step cliffs uh, or leaping at kimono to bash them with your weapon, but that's hardly what you call dynamic or exciting. However, as your knowledge expands, you learn to crowd more basic forms like a bouncy spring or a helicopter glider. Then the things get really interesting when you learn to combo the basics Kakaguri together to form defensive walls and the traps or create more offensive options like the bombs or the cannons. It's interesting new and brickle in well more formula and the, like Monster Hearts the Rise wire bugs, the Kakaguri adds something meaningful and fun while giving hunters a uh, host of ways to approach uh, the quander. It shakes up hunting formula like never ever before. That's cemented by familiar but different range of weapons your hunter carries, beginning with the Kakaguri Katana that can transform into the whip when they charge, throughout to go range the artillery of the cannon. I've been a great sword user since forever, and it's been really satisfying to learn a badge of the new weapons, with the bladed Vagatsa, a deadly umbrella that can parry enemy attacks, and the Katana sure to be popular new favorites. They're easier to learn than Monster Hunter various alternatives, but when you're mixing them with the Kakaguri, you'll never short options of in combat. The Kakaguri are isn't just there for offensive options though, that's only secondary use of them that has your own building with camps and a huge array of different creations. You start off with just a tent and campfire, but you're soon adding food, storage and drying, a workbench, radars for tracking camera and all of the sort of useful things like giant fans that can lift your into the air or zip lines to cross the whole island. When you join up the other hunters tracking to the version of the island, so you can utilize their tool and have a gather at how they design things to assist their hunts. Multiplayer has been seamless throughout the review period and asking for assistance or joining up with the other total with the regular portals across its uh, landmass. While Hearts plays a great deal of empties of the national world, Mixing animals from the real world with natural aspects like fruits and wines to create something truly idiosyncratic creatures. Oh. Ranging from the delightful wood like a red squirrel with a raspberry on tea uh, to the obnoxiously vicious seriously the lava bags mix, the monster hunter ride junk seems like a mildly annoyed fury little fella. 
The creatures design are fantastic. I love how they meld nature with the animals from the real world to create them immense Gibby ski creations. And they feel more realistic and grounded than the those in Capcom Bestiary. Gaze Ave stuck at the dam to for too long, they bought the repeatedly attempt for flatten you and swiftly be aware of the hell change. They are the The window for errors seems smaller than the Capcom series. That's not always helped by a slightly wayward camera, but the hunting materials remain intoxicating strong as you try to take them down so you can construct a fancy new pair of shoes. The marriage of the real fantastical place into the world of Amzula itself, once you made it through the expansive introduction, you unlock access to the Minato village, the hub of the whole for a foreseeable future. It's a very monster hunter place with the shops, a blacksmith, a various important people to talk to, but narrative places in Shugan era Japan with discussions of the wider world political problems making it seems as truth is a forgotten corner of the globe has been pushed from memory. It works really nicely and the setting is sold by after the voiceover work and Waliki character molds. You should of course set it the Japanese for through ethnicity, the overacting tale of the monsters charging their shedding grounds and expanding attacking while revisiting the village and its people. It is familiar, but are some surprising moments of the poignancy and truthfulness. It feels unfair to constantly reference Monster Hunter, but on the high, all impossible to consider White House without marching into the Capcom series. So much of what we hear, um, we straight of the same design, manual, and anyone that they join Monster Hunter will undoubtedly get kicked out of Omega Force take of the genre. There's some really nice alterations and under following formula as well, including the ability to create your own camps and weapons, crafting trees, and lets you shift across at many branches rather than stick the fire trunk. Accumulating different skills from each room blade can be passed into the next. It means that in endgame you might well have a weapon that bears the same name as someone else's, but unlikely to be identical. It's made for them so extremely interesting in mixing for who's into it. The best built videos are going to be something behold. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to comment and subscribe. Bye.